Welcome. Thanks for joining me today for this mini practice. I thought I would just go through a few different poses that you might consider doing if you want to maybe release some tension, tightness in your upper back, shoulders, hips, legs. Maybe you've been sitting most of the day. This is just a practice I like to do to sort of get the energy moving as well as calm the mind and soothe the nervous system. So let's start in a seat and find whatever comfortable seat works for you. Just settle in for a few moments and just start to tune in to your breath. And you might notice areas of the body that feel tight or tense. Just notice what you're experiencing. And begin to tune in to your breath. Notice the quality of your breath. Might be smooth or choppy, shallow or deep. And take a nice full inhale and a slow, soft exhale. Let it go. And if your eyes are closed, gently open your eyes and reach the arms out and up. And as you exhale, bring your hands down to your heart. Remember, this is your practice. Listen to your body, listen to your breath, and always find variations as you need to. Take another inhale, reach your arms out and up. And as you exhale, lower your right hand down beside you, lengthen through your left side, and then side bend over to your right. Choose your gaze. You might look up straight ahead, or you might turn and look down to release your neck. Breathe here. Notice how this stretch feels. On your next inhale, come back up to center. Exhale, lower your left hand down. Inhale, your right arm up. And exhale over to your left. Notice how this feels. Notice your breath. On your next inhale, come back upright and exhale, lower the arms down. Roll your shoulders. Notice how your shoulders feel. And then reverse direction. And let's shake it out. And then come to table pose, hands and knees. And make sure your knees are just about under your hips and your wrist just about under your shoulders. If you have sensitive knees, you might want to open a blanket or a little knee cushion. If you have sensitive wrists, you might position blocks under your forearms. You can always do this. Or you might come into Mushti Mudra, being on your knuckles with your thumbs pointing towards the front of your mat. Or sometimes holding your mat on either end, about a foot from the end, and pull it towards you so you get a little S shape in the mat. And then you can just rest your heel of your hands on the thicker part of the mat and your fingers on the single layer. And that sometimes can feel a little easier on the wrist. So find your variation. 
and then begin some cat cows. Inhale, arch into your cow. Exhale, draw your belly in, look to your knees for cat. So just notice how your spine feels. Move with your breath, maybe using your ocean breath or ujjayi breath. Keep your breath smooth and easy. You might have that slight constriction, just very gentle in the back of the throat that produces that soft ocean sound. And then come back to neutral and extend one leg back. Just press through that one heel. I'm extending my right leg back and keep the ball of the foot on the mat and just press that heel back. And then lift the leg up about hip height. You can either stay here or extend the left arm forward if you want more challenge for pointer dog. And then lower the hand and bend that right knee. So you're hovering it over the mat and just start to move that knee in a circle, getting into the hip joint a little bit. And then reverse direction. And then lower that knee down. And then extend that right leg to the side. I'm, I have my right foot flat on the floor in line with my left knee. And then a little movement forward and back. Just sort of notice how that feels in your inner thigh and hip. And then come back to neutral. Move your left hand a little further forward on your mat. And inhale your right arm up. So same arm as leg. So right leg is extended, right arm is lifted. And just notice how that feels should be able to twist pretty well on this side. And then lower your right hand down. Keep your wrist in front of the shoulder and inhale to the left. Now you may not go as far this way. Your right leg is extended and your left arm extended, sort of like wings. Notice how it's a little more challenging to twist on this side. And then slowly start to lower your left arm down and re-bend your right knee. From here, move your right hand a little further forward and thread the left arm underneath your right for thread the needle. Now, if it feels like your mat is too far away to put your head down, you might bring a blanket or a block and put your head on that prop. Any variation with your right hand or arm. And then inhale, press yourself back up. And we'll do the other side. Extend your left leg back. Stay on the ball of your left foot. Get a stretch in the back of your leg. And then lift your leg up about hip height, press through that left heel, engage your core. Option for the right arm to lift. You can always keep the right hand on the floor or a block. And then lower the right hand down and bend your left knee. Hover your left knee over the mat and then begin knee circles. Notice which direction you're going and then reverse direction. Notice how your hip joint feels, and then lower that knee down. Extend your left leg out to the left of your mat, and again, a little movement forward and back. Notice how your hip feels. And then come back to neutral. Inhale your left arm up. Same arm as leg is extended. Lengthen through your spine. Breathe here. 
Notice how this twist feels. Exhale, lower that left hand down. Keep your left wrist a little further forward than the shoulder and inhale your right arm out to the right. So think of your right arm and left leg extending like wings. And again, you're not going to go as far on this side. And then start to lower your right hand down as you exhale. Rebend your left knee. And then thread that right arm underneath your left or thread the needle on this side. Find your variation. On an inhale, press yourself back up, coming back into table. Place yourself towards the back of your mat. Widen your knees a little bit, toes touch, sit your hips back towards your heels for child's pose. Rest your forehead on the mat or a prop or your hands. Soften shoulders and notice your breath. Make sure your knees are happy. If knees don't like this position, you can also do this on your back, just holding your knees, drawing them towards each armpit, or place a blanket or mat under your, some sort of cushion under your knees. Listen to your body and find your variation. Take a few more breaths in child's pose. And on your next inhale, come up out of child's pose, bring your knees under your hips and come all the way onto your belly for Sphinx pose. Elbows under your shoulders, press gently into your hands and forearms. Press into the tops of your feet and draw your heart forward. Lengthen through your neck and actively engage the upper back and shoulder girdle as if you're trying to encourage your heart to shine forward. Feeling the engagement of those muscles in your upper back, the rhomboids. You can press into the tops of your feet and feel the knees lift. And draw your lower ribs away from the mat. On your next exhale, relax. Widen your elbows, stack your hands, and rest your forehead on the back of your hands in Makrasana. Release all effort and just breathe here. Soften the whole body and notice your breath. On your next inhale, lift your head, bring your hands under your shoulders, elbows point towards your feet, and on an inhale, come into Cobra. You decide how much you're pressing up, and exhale, slowly lower down. Two more times. Inhale, rise into Cobra. As you exhale, slowly lower down. Once more, inhale, rise into Cobra. You can also do Shalabhasana without hands. 
locust pose. Now it would look like this, arms by your side and just lift either the upper body or the legs. And this is sometimes better if wrists or shoulders complain in Cobra. Lower the hands under your shoulders, lower the legs if you have them lifted, and press yourself up into table pose. Pause here, lengthen through your spine, and then tuck your toes, lift your hips up and back for downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. So find your variation. Lengthen through the spine as you take your heels towards the earth. You might bend the knees a little. Feet might be about hip distance apart, maybe a little wider. Create space in the upper trapezius around the neck. Press into the hands, ground through the feet. And then lower the knees down. And if you have blocks, reach for your blocks. If you don't have blocks, get some blocks. <laughs> I really encourage the use of blocks in yoga. I used to not, but they are so helpful to find ease in so many poses. But if you don't have blocks with you, that's okay. So place the blocks under your hands and step one foot forward, tuck the toes of your back foot and come into a lunge. So notice which foot is in front. I have my right foot in front. So engage the legs, press through your feet and make sure your hands feel stable option when we switch sides we're going to have two options one is more challenging one is a little easier and more gentle so to switch sides you can either lower the back knee down and bring your front foot back in line with the back leg or lift your hips slightly and press back step back into a plank and then step the other foot forward so just switch sides whichever way makes sense to you. Coming into a runner's lunge on the other side. Legs are active, spine is long. Engage your core. And this time just step forward. Tip the blocks if you're using them on the high setting. Come up halfway, find that long spine. You might bend the knees a little and then hinge from your hips to come into a forward fold. Uttanasana. Notice your breath. Press into the balls of your feet and say hello to those hamstrings. Slight bend in the knees or a deeper bend. Listen to your body. Keep the spine mostly lengthened rather than rounded. On your next inhale, come up just halfway. Nice long spine. Exhale, bend your knees, hands to your thighs. Look forward. On an inhale, press into your feet, rise all the way up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hands to your heart. Notice your breath. Come into your Tadasana. Lift the toes, spread the toes, lower the toes back down. Press down through all four corners of your feet. Lift your inner arches as you hug your outer ankles in. 
Then take the front of your thighs back as you ground your sits bones towards the earth. Lengthen through both sides of your waist. And imagine there's a hand on your upper back, gently lifting your heart. And as you ground down through your feet, energetically rise all the way up through the spine, through the crown of your head. Gently lifting your chin as you lengthen the back of your neck. And then relax. Take a wide stance on your mat. We're going to get into the hips a little bit and then just a couple more poses. So start with your feet parallel, maybe two and a half feet to three feet wide. And then turn your heels in, toes out, and bend your knees. Make sure your knees are tracking in line with your toes always staying safe in your knees. So make sure that you're in a position that feels okay to you. And then we'll get a little movement here. Inhale, reach your arms out and up as you rise up off your knee bends. And then exhale, bend your knees again, bring your hands to your heart for goddess. Again, inhale, reach out and up. And exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Once more, inhale, reach out and up. Exhale, hands come down to your heart. Pause here. You decide how deep you go. Listen to your hips, listen to knees. On your next inhale, open the arms, goalpost arms. And exhale, bring the forearms towards each other, palms towards your face, and feel that stretch in your upper back. Inhale. Open the arms, exhale, squeezing in. Inhale, open, exhale, squeezing in. And then release the arms, come up off the knee bend, pause for a moment, parallel your feet, lower the arms, and then turn your right foot away from you towards the short end of your mat. Bend your right knee and take your left heel back slightly. Adjust your stance. You might want to have a little wider stance for warrior two. Front knee over the ankle in line with your second or third toe. So your knee is just about in line with the second or third toe rather than falling in. You don't want to strain the knee. Hips are at a little bit of an angle. So about 45 degrees so that that knee stays safe. Feel that grounding through your feet and legs. Hips are fairly level. So you could straighten that front leg, hips don't move, and then bend that knee so the hips stay fairly level. Shoulders just about in line with your hips. Avoid this leaning forward position for warrior two. Arms about shoulder height. Gaze softly over your front fingertips. Virabhadrasana two, warrior two. Find your variation. Notice your breath. So find that stability in your feet and legs. Warriors are great for building strength, resilience. And notice your breath. See if you can find some ease in your breath and maybe some softness in your jaw or your gaze. And then option, reverse your warrior, right arm up, left hand lightly on your back leg. And then inhale, come back to warrior two. On your next inhale, straighten the front leg, turn your toes in, feet are parallel. And then turn your left toes away from you, bend your left knee and come into warrior two on the other side. So it wasn't a lot of movement in the upper body and arms. Make that transition. Just make sure that knee, again, is right over the ankle. Hips are a little bit of an angle so that you feel stable. Back foot might be parallel to the back of your mat or the heel might go back slightly. 
Make sure you feel stable that you have that firm foundation for your feet and legs. Notice your breath. Gaze softly over your front fingertips. Appreciate your body's inner strength, your resilience. And then again, option for reverse warrior. Turn your left front palm up, right hand lightly on your back leg, and lengthen through your left side, coming into reverse warrior. You might gaze up or whatever makes sense to you. Try not to come up off of that front knee bend. On your next inhale, come back up, warrior two. On your next inhale, straighten the front leg, lower your arms, turn your feet parallel and heel toe, heel toe. Step your feet back into a Tadasana and pause. Notice sensation. And then let's come back to the front of our mat again. And we'll come into a forward fold once more. You might have your hands on your hip crease. Take an inhale. Long spine. Lead with your heart as you hinge from your hip crease. Keep the spine long rather than rounded. Hands onto the blocks or your shins or the mat. Take another inhale here, you might bend the knees, exhale, hinge from the hips to go deeper as an option. You might be totally fine in just that halfway position. Lengthen through your spine. And just notice how this forward fold feels compared to your earlier one. Weight is in the balls of the feet. On your next inhale, come up just halfway. Bend your knees and lower down onto one knee and then the other and make your way to a seat. Pause for a moment. Notice sensation. And then lay down on your mat and we'll come into a couple supine twists. You might put a blanket under your head and arms might be by your side. You can bend your knees. You might want a block handy. Let your knees go over to the left of your mat and you might place a block in between the knees. Arms in a T-shape and maybe gaze to your right. Relax the spine. And then on your next inhale, remove the block if you had it between your knees. Bring your knees up to the center and take your knees over to the right. And again, maybe a block in between your knees and gaze to your left. Again, find your variation that makes sense to you. Relax your spine.
and then thoughtfully remove any blocks from between your knees. And draw your knees towards your chest. Give yourself a little hug. Maybe rock side to side. Any pose that feels good to you. You might come into happy baby. Or just draw your knees towards each armpit. Or if there's another pose you would like before Shavasana, that's fine. Just listen to your body. And then when you're ready, extend one leg out, then the other. And come into your resting pose, Shavasana. Make sure you feel comfortable, warm enough, cool enough. And invite your whole body to soften and release. Relax the legs. Relax your hips. Release your back. Soften your belly. Soften the area around your heart. Relax your shoulders. Soften your arms. Relax your hands and fingers. Let your head be heavy. Soften all the muscles in your face, especially around your eyes, and let go.
Gently bring your awareness back to being on your mat. Notice your body. Notice your breath. And observe your mind. Whenever you feel ready, begin to make small movements. Maybe wiggle fingers, toes, whatever would feel good. And when you feel ready, bend one knee and then the other. And make a thoughtful transition over onto one side. Use your hands and arms and press your way back up to a comfortable seat whenever you feel ready. Maybe keep your eyes closed. And with appreciation for your efforts and your focus, bring your hands together in Anjali Mudra. The light in me sees and honors the light in each of you. Namaste. Thank you for joining me today. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.